scared me. My dear fellow, how nice of you. As a matter of fact, um, one seems to have drifted under the seat. That's very kind of you. Sorry to be such a nuisance. Not at all. Here. I know you. I beg your pardon. I hope you'll forgive me, but I seem to recognize your face. Certainly I forgive you. I have an extremely unforgettable face. Everybody recognizes it. You know, I never forget a face. Now, um, hang on, where have I seen it? Uh, no, no, don't tell me, don't tell me, because I'll tell him. That won't be necessary. I know who I am. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I, I've seen your photograph somewhere. I've seen it in the, oh, in the Financial Times. Um, hang about, I'll tell you, uh... Westbacott. Lord Westmacott. Am I? No, no. I think you're mistaken. Indeed, I'm sure you're mistaken. No, no, I definitely recognize your face. Uh, Barney. Alexander Barney. You're the head of the Metropolitan Oil Corporation. Am I right? Really, sir, I must ask for a little privacy. Tickets, please. Oh, good afternoon, Inspector. Tickets, eh? Thanks, sir. Now, where did I put it? Oh, oh that'd be an extra 75 new press to pay on this, sir. Huh? What? That's not what I said down at the booking office. You're travelling in a first-class compartment. Am I? Oh, yes, I am. I'm sorry. I must have got the wrong specs on. Uh, ah. Yeah. Well, it's uh, nice to have made your acquaintance, Mr Barney. And if you want to share a start on the move, you know, give us a tip, won't you? Oh, right. Thanks very much, Superintendent. Yeah, uh, Second-class ticket, eh? Oh, trying it on, sir. We're used to that. Damned impudence. Right. How dare they do it? Well, pardon me, sir, but was he correct? Are you really... Mr. Alexander Barney of Metropolitan Oil? Indeed, sir, that is my identity, but where I've misplaced my ticket. My secretary saw me onto the train. She should have come with me, but she couldn't. She's pregnant, you know. She had to go and see the doctor with the milkman. <laughs> <laughs> How much do I owe? Uh, two pound and ten new pence. Oh. oh, God. Oh, something wrong? My wallet. I've lost my wallet. What a catastrophic day. Oh, well, I suppose you'd better take down my particulars. Yes, very well. So your name and address. Harry Jane. Oh, my name. Oh, yes. Ah, oh, half a mayor. Um, Alexander H. Barney, Crestor Mansions, West One. How very embarrassing. Oh, not at all, sir. I understand. I do humbly apologise, and believe me, it's extremely difficult for me to be humble. Uh, now, uh, this is absolutely unnecessary, Mr. Barney. You must allow me to loan you the money. I no, don't I insist? I don't do very well. Ah, well, my card. <laughs> uh, Sir Rufus Wright, you can pay me back at your leisure. Sir, I'm afraid I didn't quite catch the title. Uh, Sir Rufus Wright, I live in Newtonbury. I presume you're going there too, on business? Yes, just a minor matter, just a couple of days. <laughs> How very kind of you. How much do I owe you? A single ticket, two pounds and ten new pence, sir. Uh, you better make it return. How very <laughs> nice of you, sir. <laughs> Have we met somewhere before? Uh, no, but I've heard of you. Of course, you're very celebrated in the city. Well, in my small way. Oh, thank you. There are your tickets, sir, and uh, change. The change. Thank you, yeah. sir. Yeah. Sorry to give you all the extra to work. Not at all. After all, it's what we're here for. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon. You know, my secretary always tells me that I'm too careless for words. She should talk. She's the one who's in the pudding club. <laughs> <laughs> Would you believe it? Here it is all the time. Oh, well. <laughs> Good uh, all's the well that ends well. <laughs> <laughs> so you live at Newtonbury. <laughs> yes. yes, I'm staying at a hotel, the Imperial. Oh, yes, yes. Perhaps you'd care to dine with me tomorrow evening. Oh, how can I... No, oh, I'll tell you what, Mr Barney. You must come and dine with us. No, no, no. I asked you first. Well, if you insist. On the other hand, a food is so indifferent these days. Perhaps your place would be better. Shall we say lunch? Of course, you'll send the car. I am grateful to you. <laughs> Do you know, I thought I'd be bored in Newton Bay. It looks as like if it's going to be most rewarding. Newton Bay, Harry. I'm deeply Harry. indebted to you, sir. <laughs> there we are. Thank you so much. When you are a happy friend of mine And all your skies are blue Tell me your luck, your fortune fine and let me love with you. Tell me the hopes that spur you on, the deeds you mean to do. The mere sight of water makes my stomach heave. It 
terrifies me. If you sink in it, it drowns you. If you drink it, it poisons you. And if you paddle in it, you get rheumatism. Johnny, be a good lad and pour me a large scotch, will you? Soda? Water, of course. Tell you, I can stand the damn stuff when it's diluted with whiskey. Do you know, if our partnership is going to thrive, you're going to have to get to know the facts of my life. I'll try. <laughs> oh, by the way, how did you get on with Sir Rufus? Eating out of my hat. What do you know about him? All I need. He got his title for some damn silly reason. He's a snob. He's also a rogue. Sharp as a needle, I'd say. Yeah, how much you reckon we can take him for? Oh, enough to tide it over a black patch until something tasty turns up. Your water, diluted by whiskey. Oh, thank you. Johnny, be a good chap and draw the curtains. I'm beginning to feel seasick. <laughs> and by the way, how much does he make? I mean, where does he get his money? What's his racket? One of the most prestigious, top of the pile. He's in hat and garb. And if you know a more lucrative way of thieving than that, I'd be delighted to hear about you. It's a license to mint diamonds. <laughs> exactly. Do you know the only jewels I ever owned are in this watch? And when I lifted it, they only offered a ten quid reward. How silly of <laughs> I thought you bought it. Me? I've never bought a watch, a wallet or a car in my life. I suppose you're an expert on diamonds. Well, not exactly. All you need is charm and personality, with both of which I'm almost overburdened. You approach the expert ignorantly and innocently. Show him a bargain and leave the rest to his greedy disposition. People are so human, aren't they? Well, we all have our weaknesses. Yeah, well, with me, it's women. You don't say. Well, they won't leave me alone. <laughs> I mean, I try to resist them, but, I mean, when all the most beautiful women in the world come chasing after you, what can you do? What do you do? Surrender. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now, listen, down in, down in the reception desk, just now, there was the most beautiful bird. Oh, just my type. And what happened? Well, nothing yet. She hasn't seen me. <laughs> but when she does, I mean, what can I do? Your superlative best to bottle up your fatal fascination. Come along, let's go down and have a look at the menu and hope it eats half as well as it reads. Your table is ready, Mr. draft here to chill the champagne. I'll close the window, monsieur. I was sitting with my back to the door in the Ritz one day when the entire Metropolitan Police Force rushed in and nicked me. It was a mistake. <coughs> they thought I was a criminal. <laughs> now then, what a splendid menu. I could read it for hours. Monsieur, Harry Adelston. Good Lord, Joe Penny. How are you, Joe? Oh, nice to, nice see, to you. see you. <laughs> One of the smartest operators in the business. Con man, tea leaf, share pusher, you name it. No, I'm not in your league, Harry. What? I wish I was. Oh. Oh, Donaldson G. Perkins, my new assistant. Joe, if you've got any gold fillings in your teeth, keep your mouth shut or you'll have them away. Always that with every friend of Harry Adelston's. No, 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 no. Alexander G. Barney, isn't it? Oh, wait a minute. No. Alexander H. Barney, Metropolitan Oil Corporation. Anderson, if you're in the racket, it's a world of Dickie Bow and all the smart gear. Well, I've got a suspended sentence, see, I have to admit it, but I've been legitimate for about three months now, I guess, if you can call this racket legitimate. What a waste! Now then, what do you recommend, Joe? I'd recommend you head straight for the Savoy Grill. This cafeteria is strictly for the pandas. <laughs> oh, I'll uh, see you in a minute. Choose your poison. Smart lad, that. Cut off in his prime. Sad. You better have this back. Oh, Joe nicked it, did he? When you were shaking hands. Silly of me. <laughs> now then, what shall we have? A bit of patty to start, followed by a... Um... <laughs> Ren, monsieur? Sugar? <laughs> I didn't see you lift the wallet, Joe. No wonder they call you fingers. I didn't see you get it back. <laughs> you? <laughs> Don't shake hands. He'll unscrew it at the wrist. <laughs> you miss it till you try to take his socks off. <laughs> Thank Harry, I'd just like to keep in practice. That's all I've been really. <laughs> Too sweet, madame. Silly old cow. <laughs> Mr. Alexander Barney. Mr. Alexander Barney. Distinguished sounding name. It's you. What? 
It's you. Oh, yes. Boy. Telephone call, sir. From who? Sir Rufus Wrightson. Oh, Sir Rufus. Johnny, give the boy a florid. Hey. <laughs> oh, sorry. Hey, uh, there we go, son. That's uh, two new P. <laughs> Tell him I'm on the blur to a Nazis in Athens. You'll ask me to call him back. Right. <laughs> yeah, hello. Alexander Barney's personal assistant speaking. Yes, I'll have him ring you back as soon as possible, sir. Right. Goodbye. Thank you, darling. Yo, hey, what's all this about? She's mine. I saw her first. Harry moves fast. Yeah, but, I mean, she looked straight through me at the reception desk this morning, and look at her now. And I'm good looking. Listen, Harry pulls more birds than Georgie best. Take my advice. Go and sit at the feet of the master. Learn how it's done. I can't bear to be tied down. Ted, old man, I said, it's simply not on. I'd be bored stiff running the coal ball. Listen, Alex, he said, Harold's a great fan of yours. His lot won't oppose it. But I still decline. I mean, what's 30,000 a year? Anyway, what's a pretty girl like you doing in this backwater? Oh, I was born here. The uh, show I was in closed last night, and I thought, well, my aunt lives here. I know a few people. It's so... fun visiting relatives. I used to visit my father every week when he was alive. He had an extensive establishment in Devonshire. Wonderful views of Dartmoor, huge staff. It must have cost a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> I told uh, Anassis that you were on the phone to Sir Rupus. I said you'd ring him back. Yeah, I said you'd ring him back straight away. And if you don't introduce me to this pretty lady, I'm going to knock you straight off that sofa. Uh, uh, may I introduce Miss... Penelope Shawman. My uncle. Oh, I never said that. <laughs> like this. Do you know, when I first saw you, you didn't step out of a dream, I stepped into one. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, look, I said uh, you'd ring him back straight away because he's going out this evening, and I'll entertain Penny while you're away. That's a matter of opinion. But perhaps I'd better go. Excuse me, my dear. Sometimes pleasure must yield to business. Must you go? This gentleman will entertain you. So he says. What an utterly charming man. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, you mean Harry? He's devastating. Well, I hadn't noticed it. But of course, delightful, beautiful manners, amusing, tremendous charm. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Here, yeah, he's pulling your pillow. <laughs> he's got about as much chance as Frankenstein. His approach is far too corny. And what are you, the spirit of Carnaby Street? Good Lord, no. I'm so out of date, I'm coming back into fashion again. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. He's a big businessman. I mean, but so am I. I mean, I'm his left hand. As a matter of fact, we're looking for a proposition. You were well to put some money into. I mean, yeah, it could be you. I mean, if you could come up with a proposition, perhaps I could finance it. Will you tell Sir Rufus I'm returning his call? Yeah, it's funny that, you know, I've often thought about going back into show business again. Again. Yeah, I had a fish tank up in Blackpool. <laughs> so I build a show around you. Let's uh, mosey over to the bar and discuss it. No, I'd like to, but I, I've got to meet my aunt. I really can't put her off now. What, not even? Well, that's all, Chick. Come along, my dear. Let me buy you a drink. Thank you. Toodle. <laughs> Mademoiselle, monsieur. Steady, chair. Oi, can't you see when you're not wanted? Now, you've got it all clearly fixed about tomorrow, I hope. When I leave, you pack our bags and pay the bill. I'll be back about four and we'll make our getaway. That is, our departure. Is that perfectly clear? Yeah, what's not perfectly clear is what you're going to be doing at Sir Rufus's, apart from eating, drinking and getting Oliver Twist. Oh, but rather like a game of noughts and crosses. I shall sit tight and wait for Sir Rufus to make a move, then... To end the game, I shall put a neat line through three magically placed crosses, and you and myself will catch the 430 to town. With note? With approximately 500 quid. Pin money, I know, but it's enough to tide us over. Where's the car, then? Second door on the right. <laughs> Good night. 
Good night. Good night. Twelve o'clock? He must have been in there two and a half hours. <laughs> How long did it take him to have a... <laughs> I wonder if he... No. No, she wouldn't. Well, not with him, anyway. Anyway, she's not my type. Keep calm, Jonathan. Keep calm. Just remember, he is your best friend as well as your business partner. Anyway, if he does half as well with Sir Rufus as he's doing with the girl, we'd be all right. We'd be in the money. After all, that's what we are here for. Anyway, I could have got her if I'd wanted her. As long as he comes home with the 300 smackers or 500 smackers or whatever it is. Good morning. I have a luncheon engagement. I'm afraid I'll have to drag myself away. I'm sorry. I enjoy your company oh, so much. Of course you do. Perfectly natural, I understand. I'll walk back to the hotel with you. Send it. Am I not yours for a week or a war? How else can friends prove the truth? There's no tricks and Tell me, chauffeur, Sir Rufus's daughter, what the devil's her name? Uh, Sir Rufus hasn't a daughter, sir. He has two sons. Sons? Oh, ha-ha. <laughs> yes, well, it's so difficult to tell which is which nowadays. <laughs> of course, sons, yes. I'm so bad on names, though. The taller one, what's he called? Uh, Mr. Bryan, sir. He's up at Oxford. Oh, yes, of course. And the other one? Uh, Mr. Howard. He's a stockbroker. Yes, yes, I remember now. Howard and Bryan. Are they at home at the moment? Uh, no, sir, not this week. Oh, capital. Ah, welcome. Not so glad that, you could make it. <laughs> what a very nice little place you have here. Ostentatious without being vulgar. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so nice of you to invite me. Not yes, indeed. Thank here we you are. Very nice way. You're all of any, my dear. And may I introduce Mr. Alexander Barney? Charm, dear lady. What a beautiful room. You designed it yourself. It has that distinctive personal touch, what the French might call banal. No, uh, we had a man from London. He acted on my wishes, of course. Oh, I see that. The Rothschilds have something very similar at their Chateau on the Loire. I stayed there in the summer. Oh, uh, an ancestor? No, I bought it at a sale. <laughs> I say it's a Van Dyke. Good. Very, very good. Quite as good as the one I have in my Paris flat. Yes, and that cost a pretty penny. Well, you know what Van Dykes are. Pink Jim, please. Tell me, how are those boys of yours getting on? I met one, you know. Howard, was it or was it Brian? A handsome boy. Now I see where he gets it from. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know you'd met. Yes, a little soiree in London. He said his brother was up uh, at Oxford or was it Cambridge. I was most impressed. Just the sort of young man this country needs. You must be proud. Oh, we are, Mr. Barney. Indeed, we are. Fancy you remembering him. Isn't that remarkable, Rufus? Looks you straight in the eye. Naturally, I remember him. Sort of face you'll never forget. That's our nephew. <laughs> Charming looking chap. Ah, <laughs> oh, thank you. Yes, I want a taxi at dead on four. And I don't mean dead on five past four. Right? I've got to make a quick getaway. Yeah, no, no, I, I mean, I've, uh, I've got a train to catch. Yeah. Get right. It's up. I wonder who he's seducing now with his oldie worldy charm. You really must come and have a look at the view from this window. Must I? Oh, yeah, of course. And uh, that's Newtonbury Castle you can see on the hill over there. 
Castle, eh? Yes, yes, yes. Ham sandwich and a cup of coffee. I'd like your opinion of this. Uh, I was lucky enough to pick up half a dozen bottles, and personally, I consider it... I oh, no, let's hear what you have to say. No, oh, thank you. Mmm. 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 Yes, indeed. <laughs> Very good. No, don't tell me. Where have I met with this fellow before? Moselle. Garker och von der Himmelreich Ossenschaft Boxster. Yeah? This is incredible. 59. Or is it the 61? No, I say it's 59. No, I couldn't swear to it. Absolutely correct. How is it possible, Mr. Barney? Well, I travel a good deal, you know. And uh, I always keep my eyes open. <laughs> <laughs> Your very good health, dear lady. I could have pulled her if I'd wanted to. Flowers for Achilles. Dear Ivor, he was such a good friend. Excel at everything, Mr. Varney. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Oh, but you really do. <laughs> Perhaps you're right. Now, uh, you know, Varney, old boy, um, I only go up to town about two, two or three times a week these days. <laughs> Taking things a bit easier now. You're a stockbroker, are you? From what I hear at the hotel, everyone is round here. Uh, no, Rufus is in diamonds. Oh, really? Good heavens. Now, that's something I don't know anything about. It's a complete mystery to me. I wouldn't know the koh -Nor from a glass doorstopper. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the only diamond I've ever possessed... I think I have it with me, actually. It's here somewhere. Now, where it... Ah, here it is. Now, what do you think of that? Mmm. Looks very good to No, me. no, no, nothing at all. As a matter of fact, it's the only thing I ever inherited. I am a self-made man, you know, and proud of it. But this uncle of mine, he was a painter. He left about five shillings and that real. <laughs> Do you think it's a real diamond? Real? Well, he didn't have two bob to rub together. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a fake. No, no, no. It's real enough. As a matter of fact, it's extremely nice. Then he must have stolen it. <laughs> <laughs> What's it worth? Fifty pounds? Oh, considerably more than that. You don't say so. Yeah. Good. I only carry it about because I was fond of the old buffer. I never wear it. Quite frankly, I think it's rather effeminate. Perhaps I should give it to a <laughs> jumble sale. Jumble sale? You can't do that. Charity, you know. It seems selfish of me sticking it in my pocket. It means nothing to me. It's not valuable. No, no, not from Uncle George. Oh, but my dear chap. I say that is a Van Dyke. Take my advice, have some advice on it. But I only paid a few pounds for it. You had the eye of a connoisseur. I lay you money, it's by somebody or other. <laughs> <laughs> I can assure you, Barney, that a jumble sale is no place for this. Oh, I don't know. You're not going to tell me it is valuable. Very naughty of me, you know, cashing in on his expertise. Well, uh, it depends, of course, on what you mean by... Uh... Any minute now, he's going to make me an offer, and if it's in cash, I'll take him in immediately. Take him on. <laughs> and beat the tax collector. Oh, I'm a silly old Billy, you know. But you wouldn't believe it, I get more of a thrill out of hundreds in cash than I do out of thousands in the bank. It's quite absurd. Rufus, if you were to offer me 500 in ten-pound notes, I'd accept. Oh, I do beg your pardon. Oh, forgive me. What a... A tasteless joke. Forget I ever said it. Oh, uh, Bonnie, uh, were you really suggesting, uh, seriously, 500 pounds? Oh, I'm only joking a guest in your house, oh, Bonnie. Well, I mean, I'm prepared to discuss business at any old time. Are you? So am I. Cash? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, if you really want to sell, yes. It can't be worth all that. Oh, I would say it's a reasonable valuation. Well, if you really want it, but it's only the rustle of the notes that appeals to me. I'm going home today, you know. I have to fly to Arabia on Monday. 
Oh, well, in that case, I could let you have cash uh, now. No, I can't do it. If it belonged to Uncle... Uncle George, it must be a fake. Oh, no, no, I can assure you it isn't. Anyway, <laughs> I'm prepared to take a chance. He is an expert, you know. <laughs> well, you've talked me into it, you naughty girl. <laughs> oh, well, easy come, easy go. Don't tell the tax inspector. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, well, yes, will you send somebody up to collect the luggage straight away, please? Room number 24. Oh, by now he's either nicked the grand piano or else he's in clink. 46, 47, 48, 49. Don't count the last one, old boy. That's something my dear old dad always taught me. There might be two sticking together. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want a receipt now, do you? No, of course you don't. Oh. The sooner the better, Alexander. Ah, oh, thank you, Lavinia. Yes, I must go. The sooner the better now, eh? You can stay too long, you know, and wear one's welcome out. <laughs> bye bye. Uh, now, well, now, you won't forget, will you, Mark? <laughs> um, if the murder between you and Shell and BP should go through, you will let me know, Well, I you? did give you my promise. Ah, oh, yes, I know, but you're such a busy man. I can assure you that if I merge with Shell and BP, no one will know before you. Thank you. It will be an economic miracle. It would certainly be a miracle. <laughs> ah, bye-bye. <laughs> <Larry. laughs> yes, well, uh, I'm extremely grateful to you. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, what a lovely man. <laughs> you will write, won't you? Oh, You've got my address. Of course I will, my dear. <laughs> I think I think you're the most beautiful man that I've ever met. Oh, thank you so much. Goodbye. Bye. -bye. Miss. <laughs> How nice of her to come all that way in the taxi. Yeah, she was certainly all over you. Naturally. Here, tell me. What have you got behind that grim facade of yours that I've got less of? Oh, little things, charm, tact, impeccable manners. Sometime when we have a few weeks to spare, I'll run through the list with you. Hello? Chug, chug, puff, puff, and away we go. Home, sweet home. How did you get on at uh, Sir Rufus's gaff? I sold him a diamond ring for 500 quid. This one. <laughs> <laughs> now, hang about. Uh, he paid 500 quid for it. Are you still got it? I don't get it. Neither did he. <laughs> of course, I couldn't let him keep it. Five hundred smackaroonies, my boy! <laughs> Tell me more. Well, he said that was its true value. But I knew, and so did he, that its true value was between three and four thousand quid. He smelled a bargain. Do you know, whenever I'm broke, I always sell this ring. Of course, I don't let anyone keep it. These um, are identical copies. I have them here. I had them made up years ago. And so you did a switch, and he's got the dud. Oh, I wouldn't say a dud. Let's say it's not worth as much as he thought. So we're laughing. Five hundred beautiful... <laughs> no. Come on, hand it over. Come on, hand over my wallet. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, this isn't it. It's like it, but it isn't. You're pulling my leg, aren't you? It will search me. Oh, blimey, then it's been lifted. <laughs> if you haven't got it, who has? You have. Come off it. I haven't spoken to a soul since I put this money safely in my pocket. Not a soul but you. Oh, I have, haven't I? <laughs> yes, you have. That bird. I thought she was all over you in that taxi. <laughs> I trusted her with everything I had. I did trust her with everything I had. <laughs> Bloody murderer! Butter wouldn't melt in her mouth! Neither would strychnine, but I'd like to see it try. <laughs> oh, well, as I always say, easy come, easy go. The bigger the road, the bigger the sucker. Well, anyway, you've still got the ring. How do you tell the real one? <laughs> I mean, how do you tell the real one from the fake? That's the trouble. Sometimes you can't. Till it's too late. <laughs> <laughs>